All in? All in. Good luck, all in. All in? Yeah, 100%. Hey guys, welcome back to the vlog, episode number nine. We got a really good one for you today, but before we get into it, I want to make a couple quick announcements. First of all, thank you so much for over 3,000 subscribers on YouTube. Can't believe how fast the channel's growing. You guys are the best. Continue to hit that sub button, leave a like on this video, and a comment. I love getting back to you guys in the comment section. If you want to connect with me further, we also have an Instagram, at JQ Poker. You could leave a like, follow on there. We post all the short content and some live updates as I'm playing sessions on there as well with some interactive stuff for you guys. If you want to play some online poker with me as well, you can DM me on there at JQ Poker on Instagram. You can get set up in rooms with me and a huge pool of players, good online community on there and a safe, secure online poker room. So let me know about that. Back to the session for episode nine, we're playing down at Dookie Betts' place. He is a channel, if you guys aren't aware, Posted up here, he makes really good content. He's a very solid poker player as well. Go check him out, very entertaining. Love watching his stuff. He's also got an Instagram, at DookieBets as well. Follow him on there. But we'll get right into it. I'm sure you could tell by the title and thumbnail. We get a little bit torched in this session. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. This is my biggest losing session I've ever had. So mom, feel free to turn it off right now. But for the rest of you, Hope you enjoy watching me punt off all my money. Didn't work at all. All right, our first hand, we're gonna peel Ace of Clubs, 10 of Hearts in the $2 straddle. We're playing $1, $1 blinds tonight. Folds around to the button, who's gonna ISO up to $7. We have a pretty easy defend. We're gonna play heads up out of position with a new player to the game. Her name is Taliana. She's shown up here on top of your screen. She's played a lot of 2-5, so she's very experienced. A lot of people think that they can bully or push around women when they play at the table, but not this woman. You can compare her to these five on the screen. That is to say, she spent a lot of time in the felt. She's got a lot of experience, probably more than me. In fact, if we take a look at a poker skill meter that ranges from whale through various types of fish up to sharks, I'm honestly not sure, guys, where octopi or turtles fall within this ranking, so sorry I couldn't include them, but I am pretty sure that Taliana would fall right about here towards the top end of skill level. She's also towards the top end, as you can see, of fans to the channel. She always likes and comments, and she's, of course, subscribed, so she wants me to remind you guys to go do that right about now. Where I fall in this rating, you guys can let me know in the comment section, but anyways, let's get back to the hand. The flop comes out king nine four with two clubs. We have nothing but an over, backdoor flush, and straight draws. Tally's gonna bet six dollars when we check to her. We think she's gonna do this with a lot of her range, so we flick in the call pretty quickly. And the turn is an interesting one. It's the queen of clubs. It doesn't improve our hand immediately, but we have the ace of clubs blocker to the nut flush. We also have the 10 of hearts blocker to jack 10 for the nut straight. So we could have a lot of strong hands played the same way. So when we check and she bets 17 into 28, we're gonna opt to raise it on up as a bluff here. We choose a sizing for the size of the pot up to $45. This puts her in a bit of a spot, especially because this board is gonna be better for her as a preflop raiser. I didn't three bet, I just completed out of the straddle. My range is supposed to be wide. She knows this, she puts in the call. Well, the river is a deuce of hearts. We have all the blockers in the world. I don't think we're gonna get many better bluff candidates than this particular combo, so we're gonna go for it. We put in one chip and announced that we're all in for $109 into a $118 pot. It's right around the 92% pot shove. Tally's gonna go into the tank here. I don't recommend bluffing bad players. They tend to be calling stations, but we don't consider Tally a bad player. So we think she's capable of making some big folds. There is an extra wrinkle in this hand. I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but back on the flop, I checked my top card and top card only to make sure it was the ace of clubs before I called to see if I could set up some bluffs on possible club runouts. This doesn't usually happen when players have a suited combo because they will remember their suits. I don't know if Tally picked up on this, but regardless, 
She's gonna put in a stack of white chips, make the call. She flips over. The queen four suited to wreck our world. We unsuccessfully bluff shove early in the night and we're stuck a buy-in right away. We rebuy before a few hands later on the button. We look down at pocket tens, the fifth best starting hand in poker. We're gonna raise it up to $5. Small blind pitches his cards. It's back in the big blind who we expect to complete with a wide range, but actually this time he opts to three bet. This player isn't super active with his three bets, so we think his range might be narrow, but still has plenty of ace-king, ace-queen hands. Seven-deuce game is also on, so there's 12 combos of seven-deuce off that he could be playing this way, so we call. Sometimes we four-bet, but we don't mind keeping his range a little bit wider. Flop comes out jack-6-3 with a flush draw. He's going to continue for $25, and I think we have a pretty standard call. I don't know if raising accomplishes so much, other than maybe clearing out some overcards, but... Don't have to worry about that when the turn is the ace of diamonds. He continues here for $35. Again, I think he could be double barreling with all his overs and again, seven deuces on, so it's tough to fold this turn. We're gonna call to see a river, which is actually a really good one for us. It comes out the seven of diamonds. We think seven deuce may shut down, thinking it has some showdown value, and I don't expect this player to triple off a hand like ace, king, ace, queen. So when he checks, we snap check it back. I don't think we can get called by worse on the river. The big blind doesn't want to show his cards. Seems like he was bluffing, so we turn over the tens right away, but actually he has pocket queens. So a bit of a strange one. We lose our first two big pots of the night. For this next hand, we're in the $2 straddle. We're about two hours into the session and we've been super card dead. We haven't won a pot yet. So a little bit frustrating. We put on the $2 straddle to set up by some action, and hopefully we can see more flops that way. Middle position player is gonna raise it up to $6. It's gonna fold around to the cutoff, Taliana, who's gonna put in the three bet up to $17. Now she's active. She doesn't have to be three betting with just queens plus ace king here. Definitely can have some three bet bluffs. So when it folds back around to me, I'm gonna look down at my cards and peel a suited 10-9 in the straddle. Now I haven't really been getting involved too much today because I've been card dead. So that plus the fact that Taliana doesn't have to be super narrow with her three bet range. We decided to test the waters and put in a four bet up to $50. Now you're not going to find the 9-10 suited on many pre-flop four betting charts. You usually want to have a hand like ace-5 suited that can block some combos of aces and ace-king when you're going to four bet bluff. But in this case, I decide to go for it. Both the middle position and cutoff players fold. We take it down. Mostly put this hand in here to show you guys how creative we've had to get to win some hands, but pick up our first pot of the night. This next hand we're gonna pick up in progress. There's a $2 straddle on. Folds around to middle position player Taliana, who's gonna make it $8 to go. The low jack. Looks at his cards, thinks about it for a while, has some tough time figuring out how to get change, but eventually he finds the call for $8. I'm on the button with a mystery hand and I decide that eight is too cheap a price to see this flop. I raise it up to $35. The small blind pretty much snap jams for over 180 bucks. He's on the nittier side, so this is terrifying but I snap call, so I better have something good. Let me know what you think I have in the comments section right now. Pause the video, get your guesses in quickly, because we decide to run it twice, and I flip over pocket jacks. We say a little prayer to Brad Owen. First run out is jack high, we flop a set, still have to fade the spades though, and we hold the first board, so we have half this pot locked up. Second board, he flops a queen, so we need an ace or a nine to hold both boards, but we brick the run out. We're gonna scoop half the pot, which is a profit of $9. Just not going our way today. This next hand's a pretty interesting one. Dookie bets opens in plus one to $3. MP, the low jack, the cutoff, all call. We three bet squeeze it up to $25. The big blind is gonna get a little creepy here with a cold call. I think when he doesn't four bet himself, he caps his range at maybe like an ace queen suited, pocket tens at best kind of hand. But there's a ton of dead money out here. Dookie bet sees it, and he four bet jams for a little bit less than 
kind of kicking myself for not just calling and trying to set mine in position with pocket eights, but I saw some dead money myself, tried to squeeze it up. Facing the four bet, it's uncomfortable with pocket eights, but let's do our best to try and apply our strategy and see what we think the best decision is here. Like I said, I expect the big blinds range to be very capped here. So I don't expect him to be that strong all that often. So right now, if you have insomnia, you're in luck. We're going to take a deep dive into this hand and try and assess our strategy. So it's $223 to call to win $530, which means we need 42% equity against Dookie Betts' range here in order to make a break-even call like the scripts say. So here's an example of what a range might look like for Dookie Betts. This is Dookie Betts approved. I talk with this guy all the time about poker. We're good buddies, so pretty sure this is what one would look like. So I've broken down this range into three groups of hands. Ones in purple are those that were pretty much crushed against. These are all the higher pairs. Ones in blue, we have a slight edge against, but we are flipping with. These are the suited and unsuited Broadway combos you might be shoving with. And in green, are the hands that we fare very well against, exclusively combos of seven deuce off. So we are playing the seven deuce off game, where if you win a hand with seven deuce, each player at the table will pay you $4, last player to fold paying you eight. So that's an extra $40 of dead money in the middle that Dookie can pick up if he chooses to shove with seven deuce off. Now Dookie is an adult, so I do expect him to be making this play with seven deuce here. So. If this is what his range looks like, let's break down the categories. So again, in purple, there's 36 combos. In blue, 32 combos of hands. And there's 12 combos of green hands. That's a total of 80 combos. So if you look at the legend off to the right-hand side, you can see the three categories within this range. The combos in parentheses and the equity of our hand pocket eights against each of the categories. So against the purple hands, we have at worst 18% and at most 20% equity, doing really bad against that part of the range. Against the blue part of the range, we have at worst 52% equity, still a favorite, and at best 55% equity, definitely a flip, but we are slightly ahead. And against the green category of hands, seven deuce, we're doing very well. So that's 88 to 89% equity. Now, the way that we're gonna calculate how our hand does against the whole range is we're gonna take these combos of each of the categories and divide them by total combos to get what percentage of his range is in each category. So for the purple combos, that's gonna comprise 45% of his range, the blue combos 40%, and the green combos 15%. So we're just gonna do a quick analysis of best case and worst case scenarios to get our range of equities. So best case scenarios for all, if you multiply it out and add them up, We'll have 44% equity, which is more than our break-even call. If you take the worst equities, we will have slightly over 42%. So overall, it is very, very close. And when things are this close, especially in this sort of setup, I tend to lead toward a call. So that's what I do. I announce that I'm all in as well. Big blind is gonna pretty quickly get out of the way. And we see the bad news when he rolls over pocket jacks. We're up against one of those purple hands. We agreed to run two boards and we're gonna need a lot of help. Thanks to Dookie for letting us use this camera angle. We're gonna break the flop, break the turn, but on the river! He said he'd come back someday and Frosty the Snowman comes through and delivers for us. Except it's a fourth diamond and he has the Jack of Diamonds. So we make our set, but we lose to a flush. The second run out, there's no hope. We lose a $530 pot. We listen to the script and make the break even call and our bankroll is falling to pieces. Yeah. Dookie Betts takes our chip stack, and I took the blame. Now I'm trying to make sense of what little remains because he left me with no chips, with no chips to my name. Well, we have a few chips. We're still alive, but we're barely breathing. 
we add on for our last rebuy of the night. They say bad things happen for a reason, but no wise words are gonna stop my stack from bleeding. We haven't won a hand since we four bet bluffed the 10-9 suited. That was at 7.14 p.m. It is currently 11.17 p.m. That's about four hours that we haven't won a hand, and I'm sick of it. So I've decided we're winning this hand, no matter what. It's so when we see an under the gun open to $3 and two callers, we're on the button. We decide we're gonna squeeze it up. I know what you're thinking. Well, what do we have? I'm actually not sure yet. I haven't looked down at my cards. Looking hasn't worked all night, so I figured I'd mix it up a little bit and just play with my intuition and live reads. I guess we'll look at his card. Uh, Cutoff player tries to rat us out right away. Good for him for paying attention, but we're gonna put in the three bet squeeze anyways up to $20. And we find out why people usually tend to look at their cards when they play poker. When Under the Gun thinks about it for a minute, reaches back into his stack, and four bets up to $55. So that didn't work, so time to click the fold button. Click the fold button. Cl oh, nope. All right, we call. This is going to be an entertaining one. The cutoff player to my left asks to sweat. We let him look at one card, so he's probably going to be as confused as we are. The reason we called is because, one, we're in position. And two, I've identified the under the gun player as locking up his profit, meaning he's up in the night and doesn't want to give it away. So I have him on a very narrow four betting range of aces, kings, ace, king, and I expect him to play timid post flop, looking to avoid tough spots and bigger pots. So when he checks flop, I check it back. And when he checks a turn, I think this is the green light for me to go ahead and bet small to try and get folded out of ace king, which will probably fold to any size. If he happens to have a hand like ace-jack suited that calls the turn, that's fine. We're just going to blast river and put those kinds of hands in tough spots. Sometimes the best bluff is when they're going to call your bet on the turn and fold the river so you can get some extra value. But the player doesn't look comfortable. He keeps checking his cards to see if they've changed. But he knows that I will have jacks and queens in my range as played. I can check those back on the flop as well. So Even though I've only bet 30% of the pot, he lets his cards go. We win our second hand of the night through six and a half hours of playing. I wouldn't recommend playing blind, but it works out for us here. It's not a large one, but it's definitely a fun one for the vlog. And we'll get to our last hand of the night. We are going to be sitting in the cutoff. Dookie bets who's under the gun raises to $3. The under the gun plus one player is going to come along. And guys, I like to preface this hand by saying... This is one that we probably should just be folding pre-flop, and by probably, I mean definitely. But when another gun plus one calls and the low jack calls, we put in the $3 with five eight of hearts. Button calls as well. This is way too loose, way, way too loose, but we are tilted and very stuck, so not an excuse, just what happens. The small blind three bets to $18. Now, this player has a very narrow three bet range. If you remember from a few videos ago, this is the same player who elected not to three bet jacks in a very similar configuration, so... I think his range is very capped here. And when Dookie bets calls and the end of the gun plus one player is gonna call, again, we don't have a good hand, but we're getting good odds. And I think we get to play against a very capped and defined range from the small blind. And we like to play against narrow ranges because we can exploit them and put pressure on them. And also we have some good implied odds. I think this player will stack off with a lot of over pairs. So we call with the suited two gapper. Uh, and we see pretty much the best flop we can ask for when we play 5-8 of hearts. It's 10-4 deuce with a flush draw. The initial raiser actually chooses to check this board. I think this pretty much defines his range as maybe aces, kings with a heart occasionally, uh, and ace-king, which is just a pure give up. Dookie bets check, so does the under the gun plus one player. We could bet here, but I choose to just check and realize our equity multi-way. Don't really want to get check raised and blown off our equity, so... We do check it back and we turn the flush with the nine of hearts. And now the small blind chooses to lead for 25. It's a very small bet, about 30% pot. I think when the small blind bets this small, Dookie is incentivized to raise off a lot of his flushes that aren't the ace high flush. So when Dookie just calls here, 
I don't think he's going to have a ton of flushes. I think the small blind now exclusively has over pairs with a heart, maybe aces or kings. So we're going to raise it up, look to get value and deny some equity from those high heart hands that still have the redraw to a higher flush. The small blind pretty quickly puts in the call. I think this means he probably has to have aces, maybe kings with a heart and Dookie bets shoves now. So don't love it. I think when Dookie shoves, he's telling us he definitely has a flush, but let's go in and count combos and do all that good stuff. Let's start by doing what we always do when we're facing a big decision, looking at our pot odds. It's $255 for us to call to win a pot of 889, which means we need 29% equity or more against Dookie Betts' range to call. There is a caveat where if the small blind overcalls, we will need less equity, but I think that's unrealistic, even though this player might do it. Here are all the possible flushes. When we look at a range chart, here are the flushes that are available now, removing the 8, 5, 9, 10, and deuce combos. And here is a more realistic range of what Dookie Betts might play pre-flop. We don't think he'll be in there with garbage, like maybe 7-4 uh, suited or something like that. So here's a more realistic range that Dookie Betts might have pre-flop. Some of these hands might get 4-bet off, but we'll get to that a little bit later. If we consider what the small blind might have, if we define the small blind's range here as aces at full frequency and some frequency of kings, that very heavily will start to influence Dookie Betts' range because of this blocker effect where if the small blind has the ace of hearts, Dookie cannot. So here are some hands that I think Dookie will just be 4-betting almost all the time. Ace-King suited and Ace-Queen suited, so I don't expect him to show up with Ace-King of Hearts or Ace-Queen of Hearts here almost ever, especially multi-way pre-flop. So if we start to eliminate those hands from his range, let's look at what happens to Dookie's range when the small blind has Aces with the heart versus when he has Kings with the heart. As played hand reading the small blind's range, I think he'll have Aces twice as often as he has Kings here when he checks the flop. If he does have Kings with the King of Hearts, here's what Dookie Betts' range looks like. I think ace-queen suited gets 4-bet off, so I think we could even take it out. I think ace-jack suited might get 4-bet some of the time. Also not sure how often he'll have these lower suited aces or 4-3 suited, but if we look at the hands we beat versus that beat us, we beat 1.5 to 2 combos, we lose to 4-8, to eight, which means we have 16-33% to 33 equity, so not the best, but we expect this scenario where the small blind has aces with the ace of hearts to be twice as likely as when he has kings, so when he does have aces, he only has maybe 5 flushes here. And we're going to beat 1 to 2 and lose to 3. We can see that we have 25 to 40% equity, depending on if he has the combo of 4-3 suited. So to find out our estimated equity in the hand, we'll take the weighted average. It's just going to be equal to the sum of the probability that the small blind has aces with the ace of hearts, times the equity we have against Dookie's range when he has that combo, plus the probability he has kings with the king of hearts, times the equity against Dookie's range when he has that combo. You guys can pause it here and look at the math a little bit further. We average it all out, we get about 27% equity against that range, so this is a fold, according to our math. Uh, In-game, I miscalculated a little bit and thought the pot was a bit bigger, so I thought I had the right odds to call. We put the money in, and we'll hope for the best. The small blind doesn't snap fold, and he's going to turn his cards over and show us that he has aces with the ace of hearts. So our read was pretty good there, and that's actually preferable for us. We like to see this because we think it cuts down on the combos that Dookie might have for flushes. Eventually, small blind thinks about it for a while. I think this is probably just a snap fold, but he does make the correct fold, and I asked Dookie right away. Oh, hi. Queen on. I'm dead. He tells us he has Jack, Queen of Hearts, beaten with my own hand. We're drawing dead. We can run the river infinite times. Not one of them's gonna help us. We get stacked for the third time tonight, and it's time for us to pack up and head home. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it this far, share this video with a friend who's better than me at poker and comment the word crushed down below because that's what happened to us tonight. In for this much, out for zero dollars. So, our worst night ever at the table. I'm glad I got it on video because I want to be genuine and transparent with you guys as much as I can. It's not an easy game we play, so nights like these are going to happen. If you really believe that you're way better than me at poker, then DM me on Instagram at JQPoker. We'll get you set up in the online space. You can play against me as well as a variety 
of other players in a massive pool of varying stakes of cash and tournaments. There's also a lot of free value for you guys to be had when you sign up through me, free roll tournaments, as well as deposit match and bonuses. So let me know about that on Instagram. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. Leave a like, subscribe, comment, share with a friend. And hopefully you learned something too. We did some pot odd calculations. We looked at some hand reading and range analysis, as well as some blocker effects. So, you know, learn from my mistakes so you don't have to make them at the table. Anyways, I really appreciate you guys. I'll see you in the next one.